we return to the hacking of the Democratic National Committee. According to reports, U.S. intelligence has high confidence the Russian government was behind it. Sources close to the investigation told the NewsHour one of the hackers was also involved in the breach of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. And then today's revelations that Hillary Clinton's campaign was also hacked. We explore how the U.S. government should respond now with Susan Hennessy. She was an attorney in the office of the general counsel of the National Security Agency. She's now a fellow at the Brookings Institution. And Andrew Weiss. He has worked for both Republican and Democratic administrations as a staffer on the National Security Council in the state and defense departments. He's now at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. And we welcome both of you to the news hour. Susan Hennessy, let me start with you. Before I even ask you about the hacking of the Clinton campaign itself, which we just learned about this afternoon, how confident are you that it was the Russian government that was behind the tacking, the hacking uh, into the DNC and the Congressional uh, Campaign Committee? Right, so when uh, attributing cyber attacks, it's almost impossible to ever be 100% certain. Uh, in this case, you're about as certain as you could reasonably expect to be. Um, there were strong technical indicators uh, that emerged as early as June. Um, now hearing that the intelligence uh, community, community has reported to the president high confidence, that's a likely indicator that they've uh, found corroborating evidence through other intelligence mechanisms, um, signals intelligence, financial intelligence, human intelligence. Um, so at this point, uh, it's a fair uh, operating assumption. Um, there might be some room for plausible deniability, but it's really quite certain. All right, I just want to say we're having a little difficulty with your microphone. We're going to try to get that fixed. I'm going to turn right now to Andrew Weiss. What about you? Uh, how much confidence do you have that, uh, that it's clearly the Russian government uh, behind what we know so far? Well, so far, this is a very fast-moving story, and I think we all need to be cautious because the facts are not clearly out there. Yesterday, General Clapper, who's the president's director of national intelligence, was talking in Aspen. He said he wasn't prepared at this stage to make a call. But so far, everything that's dribbled out seems to point in the direction of some form of Russian government involvement. There's been forensic data that's been trumped out, uh, dri dribbled out into the press right. that points to comparable attacks that have been attributed to Russia over the past several months, and that the attacks on the DNC and the DCCC seem to be fitting within the same group of Russian actors. And so, Andrew, why staying with you, now that we're seeing this report just in, in late this afternoon that the Clinton campaign itself has been hacked, what does that tell you? Well, about a month or so ago, General Clapper himself also pointed to the possibility that foreign governments were trying to hack into the U.S. presidential campaign staffs. And so the, the word has been on the street for a while now that this is a, a very you know, toxic environment and that there's a lot of interest in what is what traditionally people would think is confidential or secret. Susan Hennessy, why would the Russians do this? I mean, there's a lot of suspicion going around. Maybe they want to tilt the election one way or another. What, what is believed by the people who study these issues all the time? Well, so there's a lot of different explanations. Um, one is that there are there's reasons why uh, President Trump would be more favorable to Russian interests. Um, he's uh, indicated positions uh, being withdrawing support from NATO, for example, uh, which is a primary check on Russian uh, global uh, power in the world. Um, additionally, you know, the Russians have a history with Hillary Clinton and Vladimir Putin in particular. Um, so they also have a reason to oppose her. Um, they also have a reason to maybe just demonstrate that uh, the U.S. has some corruption in its elections of its own. And, and Andrew Weiss, what's your sense of, of what motivations there could be behind what the Russians are doing? Well, let's step back a little bit. If you remember, the past three years have been a real down point in U.S.-Russian relations. And in, as a result of the severe deterioration in U.S.-Russian relations, the Kremlin has authorized any number of lines of effort. So we've seen cyber attacks in Europe. We've seen support for populist parties, including Marine Le Pen in France, financial support, political support. We've seen cyber intrusions against U.S. allies. We've seen overt uh, military intimidation. We've had Russian jets trying to barrel roll U.S. military intelligence planes over the Baltics. The overall process of Russian putting pressure on the United States is well established. The question now is why were these facts from the DNC leaked publicly? What was the goal? What was the political motivation? And it seems in part to be to create as much confusion and to create as big a mess as possible. To say that you know an attack that was going back you know, 12 months when the first detection was of 
Russian presence inside the DNC's email servers to today. It's, it's been a very complicated election campaign. I think it's hard to say the Russians tactically knew exactly what they were doing. And that, and that gets to, uh, 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 Susan Hennessy, that gets to this question of whether uh, the Russian government gave it to WikiLeaks to put all of it out there or whether it was stolen uh, and that things just got out of hand. Right, so um, one thing that's interesting is actually the initial uh, leaks from the documents were not uh, leaked through WikiLeaks. They're actually posted on a standalone site um, by a hacker reporting to be Guccifer 2.0. Um, uh, it was only this latest email dump that actually went through WikiLeaks. Leaks. Um, there are reasons to believe uh, the Russians might have handed it over, but there are alternative explanations. What do you mean, reasons to believe the Russians might have handed it over? You mean because of what we've been talking about here? Right, or? so there's no evidence that a third party uh, breached the DNC or the DCCC. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's sort of a logical inference that the documents were in one place, we, no one else has them, and they wound up in another. Um, that said, uh, it's possible that documents were stolen uh, from the Russians themselves uh, or were stolen from the DNC by some third party. What, what should the U.S., what are the options, let me put it that way, Andrew Weiss, for the U.S. government in response to this? FBI Director James Comey came out recently in the last 24 hours and said he's uh, looking at the possibility of naming the culprit. And so this has been something that the U.S. government has done very seldom in the past, where they basically try to name and shame and say that we can attribute this attack to a state actor, in this particular case, potentially Russia. That's been done very seldom in the past with regards to China and North Korea. It would be a very big step if that's where the U.S. government ends up. Is that the, the strongest step the United States could take? Certainly not. That's sort of that's the um, the preliminary step, kind of the, the most basic step they could take. Um, you know, the, the additional levels of attribution might be to the actual individuals uh, behind these attacks uh, who operating path of the Russian state. Um, so in the past, the Department of Justice has indicted uh, Iranian uh, uh, cyber hackers, Chinese cyber hackers. Um, so those kinds of indictments would be sort of an escalation. Um, but really, there's the full scope of options um, in, in terms of how to respond. Naming individuals who are part of the Russian government? I mean, sure. So, um, um, imposing financial sanctions against uh, individuals who are suspected or, or believed of being involved. Um, there's also a, a benefit uh, and an embarrassment um, to just saying uh, that we know who it is and, and sort of putting that out into the public space. Andrew Weiss, what are the what are the um, I guess the the possible repercussions if the U.S. does not only name and shame but go even further? I think we're in a real moment of uncertainty. People. Think about what's going to happen in this election campaign. You have to think about where will U.S.-Russian relations be in three or four months. I, I frankly have no idea. The question is, are we in a spiral or are we in a possible moment where there could be a worse confrontation, some form of military to military inadvertent escalatory moment? So it's a very dangerous situation. I think it's really important for the U.S. policy community to take a deep breath and evaluate our situation very carefully before rushing into anything. Well, it's clear this is a story that just as the days have gone by, we've learned more in today, this new information about the Clinton campaign. So we will see what more comes out. Andrew Weiss, Susan Hennessy, thank you both. Thanks for having me.